So, the franchise broker is there the whole way, navigate you, uh, and it's really an art to take you, who has no idea of what business they want to be involved, or maybe you have an idea, and it's and it's once you understand that business model, you're like, no, I don't want that business. So, a franchise broker, really a good one, is going to be very skillful in helping you work through to find the business that resonates with your lifestyle, with your financial goals, and your financial capabilities at this time. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. On today's episode, we're going to discuss the pros and cons of working with a franchise broker. So what the heck is a franchise broker? Well, a franchise broker is kind of like a real estate broker, like a buyer's agent. They help you vet and find an ideal business to invest in. So that's really how they work. They get paid by the franchisor out of their marketing budget, so they don't charge you a fee. And their job is really to assist you in the transition into business ownership, whether you're a W-2 employer, uh, employee or you have an existing business. They're help, here to help you, guide you through, and help you understand the different business, uh, business models out there, the pros and cons of those business models. They help you do due diligence on those business models. Now, they're not going to review the financials with you per se. They're going to, that's what the, the franchisor does. They're going to provide the FTD, which is the franchise disclosure document, which is one of the, the due diligence pieces that you're going to do amongst many as you're going through the process. But really, what happens is, is that they're going to usually have you take a, a business assessment. Uh, that's a usually a starting point. It's, it's kind of like a disc profile. And you're going to take that. That helps them, and it helps them match different business models that you might be well suited for. They're also going to dive into your financial capability. Are you going to get an SBA loan? Are you going to put a HELOC on your house? Do you have cash? Figure out what's reasonable, what kind of investment range you can make. They're going to find out: Are you keeping your current job? Are you looking for a semi-passive model? They're going to dive deep into that. They're going to explain to you the different business models out there how the businesses run, the different sectors. And that's really where you get started. The advantage, another advantage of working with a franchise broker because they're going to help you streamline this whole process rather than you going on biz by sell and trying to figure this out yourself. And you look at ads and all of a sudden you realize it is a franchise broker trying to get your business um, or you're just seeing ads from the franchisors themselves. So instead of going direct to the franchisor where they're going to try to get you into their model, I think it's a better approach to look at it from a holistic standpoint and look at it globally because there's a lot of concepts. You might come in thinking you want a sandwich shop and you end up getting into the home service business. A lot of franchises out there, there's well over 3,000 franchises to look at. So you, you're not going to know what you don't know. So that's really what a franchise broker is really valuable uh, to help you and help identify and facilitate the buying and investing process into a franchise. They have uh, connections to franchise attorneys, to lenders. Uh, they're going to know from their, their colleagues if you know who has good experiences with what franchise concepts, right? Because if 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 you're in a connected group, like most franchise brokers are part of an association where they have their own inventory, um, they have regular meetings with the franchisors, understanding the business models, understanding the ideal candidates. So there's a big process. It's not like you just go out and you go, okay, I want to buy a franchise. I'm going to pick this franchise because I like the pretzels. There's a lot of a lot go that goes beyond, behind the scenes to figure out and what what would be the best investment for you. So that's the process, you know, in a nutshell. And so now, let me walk you through the process, really, of how I think most of these processes will go while working with a franchise broker consultant. They're usually going to have you start with a franchise assessment. They're going to dive into your financials a little bit. They want to know what what's feasible. They'll probably have some basic understandings of the ROBS rollover, how you can roll over retirement potentially. You might have an old 401k that's eligible for a ROBS rollover. They're going to give you a little bit of insight of what's available. They all usually have a funding specialist they work with. They have several funding conduits that they can in introduce you to. Then they're going to talk to you about the different sectors. Uh, they're going to go through your franchise assessment or business assessment. It's actually called a Zorical profile. 
They're going to walk through that with you. They're going to walk through all the, the different sectors within franchising, home service, automotive, health and wellness, advertising, marketing, retail, to name a few. They're going to, get, they're going to usually have you rate those concepts, those sectors, I should say, of what you like, what you don't like. And they're also going to explain what you would do within that business model, right? Because you might think, I don't want to, I don't want to own uh, an HVAC company. I have no experience. But as you dive deeper, you'll understand that franchise concepts, typically you don't need experience because they, they have systems and processes. They usually prefer if you don't have experience in the sector. So even if it's something like HVAC or plumbing or electrical contracting business, or uh, a roofing company, you, nece- you don't necessarily have to have experience because they have systems, processes, marketing. Uh, it's really, I, don't, I hate to say business in a box, but you're getting a concept, you're getting systems, and that's how they're able to grow the business so quickly. A good franchise can grow many units in one year. And so that's why these business owners like franchising their business because they can rapidly grow by getting people like yourself that own the business and help them grow that territory, those locations. So going back to the process, so usually on the second or third session, you meet with your franchise broker. They're going to review some ideas they had for you, and they're going to usually give you um, a PDFs, uh, brochures on each of the concepts. They're going to go high level about the concept, what the concept does, why they like the concept, give you a little nuts and bolts about the business model. They're not going to go into the day-to-day and the nitty-gritty. That's later down the road. They're going to see, they're going to usually present anywhere from four to seven, eight different ideas. Maybe you like one or two of those ideas. From there, those one or two ideas, they'll typically introduce you to the Zor. We call them Zors, franchise Zors. Uh, The Zors typically have somebody that handles the candidate calls as you're you know, you're going to have your first call with them, which is really probably 30, 45 minutes. And it's a deep dive about the business model. They don't usually go over everything because there's a lot to take in, right? You're going to be investing into a business. So it's usually two or three calls with them as you're discovering the concept. And from there, uh, you're going to keep on doing due diligence. Once you're moved down the path and say, okay, I like this business model, what other due diligence? So you're doing calls. You're getting on calls with people that own the business, other franchisees within the system. You're validating. At the same time, if you're doing SBA financing, you're typically working on putting together projections. I've done other videos on putting SBA projections together and why I think the projection, the SBA projections are a very good due diligence process in the buying of the business. And I always say get started sooner than later. Because it's going to teach you a lot about the business. What are the costs? What are the recurring costs? What's the royalty fees? What do I need per the FDD, the franchise disclosure document? Okay, I need one truck. I need two employees. I need this software. I need you know the average sales price. Let's say it's a handyman company. The average ticket price is $423 per service call. How many service calls can one truck do? How do I scale it up? When do I go to truck two? And this is how you build out the projections. This is a great, great way to understand the business model in a higher level. So I always want my candidates to get involved. I have kind of an interesting background because I do the SBA financing and I also do franchise matching as a broker. So I feel like I have a little bit of a competitive advantage to the fact that I understand financing. I understand when I'm having my initial call with the candidate what's realistic from a, a financing standpoint. Many of us don't have a two, three, 400 grand sitting in our bank. So we're going to either leverage our home equity. We're going to get an SBA financing and get up to 90% of total project costs financed by the SBA loan. So as we're going through all this process, we're matching you. We're, we're honing down into what business models. We're doing due diligence. We, we provide checklists. We have the CPAs. We have the franchise attorneys as you get further down the process. So as you're doing your your validations with other franchisees in the concept in in, in the system, 
Um, at some point, you're going to be at the point where you're going to do a discovery day. That's where you usually fly in and meet the corporate team for that franchise. And at that point, it's usually you're pretty much ready to go. Your you you have your financing is lined up to a certain degree. Uh, you've done your validation calls with other franchisees. Um, you've really done most of your due diligence. You're going to meet the team, the franchisors. They actually award, so it's a two way street. So it's not like, hey, I've got the money and I'm ready to go. I'm going to, I could buy the franchise. They're going to award you too because if they don't think you're a good fit and that it's not going to work out, they usually are going to say no. Now, that doesn't happen that often, but they do reject candidates. Uh, they usually re uh, reject candidates early on the process as the as they're setting up calls with the candidates. If the candidates are no-showing or not doing any research or not really engaged, a lot of times these, these franchise constants are very busy and they will you know, eliminate you and say, look, you're not, you're not following the process or the system. So it is a two way street at the end of the day. So then you go to discovery day, <clears throat> everything looks good. They award you the franchise, you button up your financing. You, you, you typically would want a franchise attorney to, to just review the franchise agreement uh, with you and make sure there's no red flags, a really established franchise concept will probably not modify the franchise agreement. It's not like you're going to go in and sometimes there's some, a little bit of negotiations that happen, but you'd really want a, an attorney just to make sure there's no red flags, right? It's definitely worth it. You're, you're making an investment into this business for X amount of years for the ad, ad, addition, uh, for the, you know, the term could be five or 10 years. So it's a big commitment. So you want to make sure you know what you're getting into. And then after that all happens, you get your funding in place, you sign the franchise agreement and get the invoices for all the equipment you needed. Or, or if you're doing a quick serve restaurant, the build out, it's really the process. So the franchise broker is there the whole way, navigates you. Uh, and it's really an art to take you who has no idea of what business they want to be involved, or maybe you have an idea and it's, and it's. Once you understand that business model, you're like, no, I don't want that business. So a franchise broker, really a good one, is going to be very skillful in helping you work through to find the business that resonates with your lifestyle, with your financial goals, and your financial capabilities at this time. So hope you enjoy this, the pros and cons of working with a franchise broker. Remember, if you need financing help, SBA. If you have questions on SBA, how to finance franchises, you know what are the guidelines, how to structure deals, or if you're looking to buy a business and you need some direction, you can go to bookwithbo.com. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode. Welcome to the Own a Business Today podcast, your ultimate destination for captivating interviews with franchisers, seasoned business owners, and ambitious entrepreneurs. Prepare to explore the dynamic world of franchising and business acquisitions. In our episodes, we will explore subjects like uncovering profitable franchise opportunities, taking the courageous leap into franchise ownership, and seamlessly transitioning from your traditional 9-to-5 routine into the domain of business ownership. With your host, Bo Eckstein, leading the way, join us as we dive into the exciting world of entrepreneurship. To catch previous episodes, dive into in-depth articles, and access a wealth of additional resources, visit us at ownabusinesstoday.com.